Welcome back, friends. On today's episode, we're going to be assembling this herringbone knot. I've really been enjoying this knot over the past few months, and I think you'll enjoy it too. Before we get started tying the knot, let me show you how I'm setting up my heel knot foundations these days. I've cut a piece of this neoprene rubber to one inch wide. This stuff is two millimeters thick. You can find a link to it in the description. I'm test fitting it around so once the edges meet, I am now going to be wrapping that with artificial sinew to hold it in place nice and tight. After a few wraps of the sinew, I'm going through with the stapler, making sure that this thing never goes anywhere. Next, this is one millimeter thick fake leather. And I'm going to do two revolutions. This stuff is cut to half an inch. You can also find this in the description. And the idea here is to create kind of a cone. I want a gradual taper to this knot foundation. So that's two revolutions with that stuff. And now I'm going over it with some artificial sinew to hold it down. And now, as you can see, I'm stepping downward and I'm filling in that step and I'm trying to achieve more of a ramp than a step just so it's smooth. But I kind of like the tapered heel knots. I do them quite frequently now. Once that's done, just a few more staples to hold that all in place. That's never going anywhere. Now I'm doing a little bit of farrier work here, kind of like um, you just kind of trimming the top, making it nice and flat with the lighter, melting the, the parachute cord. And we're prepping the surface for a little disc that we're going to make out of this uh, one millimeter thick pleather. So this is just super glue. I'm laying a nice coat down and now I'm just sticking this stuff on. Give it a little press there, nice and tight. I'm going to let that sit for about five minutes. Now I'm coming through with the scissors and just trimming it into a disc. The edges don't have to be perfect because the knot's going to be kind of wrapped around so it won't be visible anyway. But I like to trim it up and take the lighter and get rid of those little uh, fringes. Lastly, uh, I have some hockey tape and I'm just going to go around the foundation to cover up the staples. This thing is ready for a knot. Let's do it. Hello everyone, it's Nick from The Whip Shop. I'm so glad you guys are here today. I am excited to teach you guys this brand new knot that I learned over the past few months. I want to say right now that I probably wouldn't be able to make this tutorial and share this with you guys uh, if it weren't for some help from my friend Torrance Fisher of Sword Guy Builds. Uh, Tori visited me a few months ago over the summer and he sat down and kind of coached me through this knot. So big thanks to him for helping me learn this new knot. For all these years on this channel, I've done nothing but Turk's Head knots. Uh, given that some of them were a little more complex with, uh, with different tones, but I avoided it for so many years because of my own fear and intimidation of tying the knot. I'm so glad I did it. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. With a little bit of practice, you guys can learn it too. So the first thing I wanna mention before we start tying this knot is I want to show you guys the dimensions uh, of this heel knot foundation. As you can see, that's about 30 millimeters tall and the width is about 33 millimeters. So as far as the dimensions go for this knot foundation, I can't stress enough, it doesn't have to be perfect. With these knots, you have the ability to kind of push things around with your thumb a little bit. And if you wax the whip in the end, that's going to really help tighten things up. So don't be scared if while you're tying this knot, you see these little gaps forming in between the strands. It's okay. Uh, rolling the whip after the fact that the knot is tied, uh, in addition to pushing things around with your thumb, it's gonna be okay. It really will be okay. So bottom line, it doesn't have to be this exact size and dimension. As you saw a little bit earlier in this video, uh, we used that one millimeter uh, fake leather to build up that little ridge on the upper portion of the knot to give us this nice cone. See that? It's not just a perfect cylinder, but it's got a little slant to it. And I like that look actually. So if you fall within that range, give or take a few millimeters, everything should work out just fine. The thing that really helped ease my mind about this knot is that it's based off of a Turk's head knot. I'm gonna be making this knot in real time today for you guys, so I encourage you to grab a whip that you're working on 
and I'm going to be moving slow enough to where it might be painful for some of you guys who are more proficient with your Turks and knots. But I'm going to go nice and slow because I want to give uh, everybody who's beginning uh, an opportunity to make sure they understand what I'm doing here. Uh, so that being said, real-time video, work along with me. I encourage you to do that. It'll be helpful for you. Um, so let's lace up this, uh, this needle here. I'm using a micro needle from Jig Pro Shops. And this needle, unfortunately, has been getting some bad mouthing on different whip making forums. And the reason for that is there's a little bit of a learning curve as far as uh, knowing how to cut and melt the tip so that it goes into this needle. Some people were saying, man, I cannot thread it into the needle. It's impossible, this and that. And it can be frustrating. But if you put a little time into it, it goes in just fine. And I really like this needle just because it's so thin and it has the ability to just pass through underneath uh, different parts of the knot. So what are we going to do? We're going to start with a Turk's head knot. As you can see, I got this overhead camera here, which is really nice. I hope it works out well. I think it will. And this is <laughs> to mark my place so I make sure I stay in the frame. So this is a three foot gutted piece of parachute cord and another three foot piece of gutted parachute cord. I have to stress with this knot, you can use a solid color. If you use the same color for each strand, it can be very difficult to navigate through the knot. Things don't stick out as much as they should, especially when you're learning. So I highly recommend using two different colors. So that's what I'm doing here today. We're gonna to start off by tying a Turk's head knot. We're gonna to go to a five by four and expand to a seven by six. This is something I've done uh, before in a video. So I'm gonna do this nice and slow. I'm gonna take the end that's opposite the needle and I'm just gonna lay it down 45 degrees while holding it with my thumb there on the foundation. Up over the top, pinch that with my index finger and I'm gonna come around the back like that and I'm gonna go over where we just started like that. Next, I'm going to continue up alongside that strand and I'm going to go over that one. And then I'm going to hold that once again with my index finger. Next, I'm going to come around the side there. See, we went over that one alongside that strand there, still holding with the index finger. And I'm going to take my needle and we're going to go under this strand like that. Make sure these are right here. We want a 90 degree angle or as much so as we can have it be. We went under that one. Now we're going to go over this one here. Up alongside here, we're going to go under this one. and over this one right there. See that? We're going over that top one. We're also gonna go over that one, over this one, and under this one. Hold this here. Don't pull too tightly. And we're gonna go, we just went under that one there. See that, we went under that. We're gonna go over this one. We're gonna go over this one. And now we're gonna go under this one. And just a little tiny pull there. At this point, we wanna go over that one and under this one. And we can see a little square here that forms at the top. And that's what we're looking for to indicate that we're on the right track. So we went under that one and now we're going to go over this one and under this one. We went under there. Now we're going to go over this one 
and then under that one. And that completes our 5x4 Turk's head knot. At this stage, I like to go ahead and just kind of straighten things up a little bit. The idea is to have these squares be about the same size all the way around. And when it's this early in the um, this early in the whole knot, it doesn't really matter that much, but I just like to do it because it makes it a little easier um, as the knot progresses and becomes more full. See, that one's pretty big. I'm just gonna slide this guy over here a little bit, always examining the top there. That looks pretty good, I like that. So, what are we doing next? Now we want to take this 5x4 Turk's head knot, we want to expand it into a 7x6. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to follow this lead strand here. So, up on the right, down to the left. And what that means is I'm going to do what this strand does on the right side. And coming down, I do what it does on the left side. And I'll show you what, what I mean by that if you're confused. So this is where we started. We just went under because it did it. So we're gonna do it too, but on the right side. So see how it goes over this one, this strand here is the lead strand. It goes over, we're gonna go over it as well. Look at that, it goes underneath. So we're gonna do what it does. Now, what do we do here? We have a little X that is at the top here. There's a series of X's, there's four of them. Five by four, see there's four X's. So we just went under this one. We wanna bypass all of this in the expansion pass. So I'm literally gonna skip over, over all of this and I'm gonna continue over here. And see this strand here is the one we're gonna mimic. So you mimic the strand on the right going up and coming down, we mimic it on the left. So I'm gonna skip over all this mess here and I'm gonna go under, because that strand goes under this one, but I'm gonna mimic it on the left because we're coming down. And then we want to not pull so tightly. We're just gonna kinda let that do its thing, just about like that. So went under there, we went under, it goes over here, we'll go over, and then see it goes under, so we're gonna go under, but on the left side. Once we get to the bottom, we can see a very similar situation going on here. So I went under there, now I'm gonna go over this one here, over this one here and under. If we move these two strands to the side, we can reveal the strand we need to go under. And the same thing, I'm not gonna pull hard here. I'm just gonna let it rest there. So see how, now on this expansion pass, what we're doing is we're doing the opposite of what the two strands on the left and right do. The left and right strand, see how they went over here? We're gonna go under there, and we did. Now, they go under on the left and right. We're in the middle now, so we're gonna go over. Over that one, and then if we spread these apart, we can see we need to go under this one. Like that. And then once again, coming back down, we're still gonna be in the middle. Spread these two apart. And then this is the one we need to go under. And pull this gently, try not to uh, create any knots. Or uh, I should say twists is what I meant to say. So on the left and the right of us, those two strands go under. So we're gonna go over, we're gonna be rebellious. And then down here they go over, so we're gonna go under. Just like that. They go under, we're gonna go over, over that one. And then just spreading those aside again, they go over that last strand, so we're gonna go under. And that completes the seven, 
uh, the six by seven Turk said not single pass and it's at this point where we need to really neaten things up this is where it becomes very important to distribute all of those strands evenly and I like to do this by just kind of pushing things around a little bit take a look at the top see the crowding going on there we're just all we're doing it's kind of like a Rubik's cube in a way and it's not always immediately apparent you know which strands need to go what direction I still sometimes struggle with this to be honest it's kind of hard to know where does where do I need to push that little strand and when you push them around sometimes there will be some slack that comes out you see that slack and the way we can eliminate that is just find an area on the knot and gently pull and then go all the way around like this and this will help make those little squares, the white squares, more uniform. So, the reason I use the snake whip in this tutorial, or I'm using one here, is because I can get that angle. If I was using a bull whip for this tutorial, it just you wouldn't be able to see nearly as well uh, what I'm doing, or at least that's the idea. Hopefully, you guys can see what I'm doing. I think you can. So let's look at the top again. Look, I got all this stuff over here and I don't have very much over here. So I'm gonna push that around. Just using my thumbs, just kind of push stuff around and see where, where it goes. As you can see, it's starting to become a little bit more even all the way around. This side is a little bit in need here. And the top, the top is a very good indicator. If we have a perfect, what is that, a hexagon? Yeah, we want to see a perfect uh, hexagon on the top, six sides that are of even length or as close as you can get them. And if it looks lopsided, chances are everything else is. So you could kind of fiddle around with this for a very long time if, if, you, if you wanted to, to get it just perfect. But for the sake of uh, time, I don't want to keep you guys sitting here for too long. All right, there we are. So that's looking a lot better. See that? A little bit too big there. And I'm just kind of evening things out. So this right here is a single pass seven by six Turk's head knot. And what we're gonna be doing when we introduce the interwoven section and start tying this herringbone knot is we're essentially going to be tying this same knot, but it's gonna be offset a little bit. So it's kind of like two knots that are woven together, but in such a fashion that it looks complex and it looks really beautiful. So I'm happy with that. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna tie off this strand. So I'm gonna go over this one. I'm gonna go under all three of these like that. And what that's gonna do is it's going to enable us to tie it off so that it's not in the way anymore. And the nice thing about this knot is we don't have to fuse any paracord to itself like we did with the other tutorial I made. So we went under one, two, three, I'm gonna take this strand here and I'm just gonna push it up out of the way temporarily. I take my scissors and I'm just gonna snip that and take my lighter and I'm just creating a little area where I'm going to be pressing melted paracord into this um, knot foundation. I'm gonna do that like this. And push it in. Be careful if you do this with your thumbs. I do it a lot, so I think my nerves are dead in my thumbs. But uh, it might help to uh, use something other than your finger. So you see that? That's just kind of tucked out of the way. It's underneath, it's on the bottom layer. Uh, once we do melt that in, it might be necessary to kind of push things around a little bit and re-even uh, the, the, uh, the surface there. So that's our first pass. I'm gonna leave this here until I'm done with everything else. Well, all right guys, we have our single pass seven by six Turk said not established. We have that one strand tucked away underneath so it's not gonna be getting in our way. 
So it's time to get started with the interweave portion of this knot. So enjoy guys. This is your first time tying this knot probably. And uh, don't let it intimidate you. Just take your time. I'm gonna go as slowly as, as I can to make sure that uh, you can see everything I do with my hands. Um, this is the first time I'm using this new uh, overhead camera rig. So I hope you guys are able to see what I'm doing. I think you can. Looks all right. Okay, so a couple things I want to mention to you guys. So if you see this strand here, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be picking a strand and we're gonna follow it up and we're gonna mimic what it does on the left side as we go this way. When we come down from the top, we're going to be mimicking a strand on the right side. So pick a strand, say, okay, this one goes over, we're gonna go over, it goes under, we're gonna go over, uh, excuse me, under, on the left side. So up on the left, down to the right. Also, we're going to uh, come upon instances where we have two strands that are right next to each other like this. At no given point do we go under both a white and a pink strand. We never do that. Um, we'll either be going under or over, but they will always be split in half. So if you have two strands of different colors, you'll always be splitting. You never want them to be touching. So we'll never be going uh, under a pair of two different colors, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. In addition to that, we're going to be coming across a series of X's. If you look at the top of the knot here, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six little X's. So as we pick a strand and follow it all the way up, we'll be doing what it does, but We'll come to these X's, and when we come to these X's, we're going to be doing something like this. We're going to be going underneath all of it. And you'll see what I mean when we come to that point. Um, the reason it's so important, in my opinion, to start off one of these herringbone knots with two different colors, have the interweave a different color, is because it makes it so much easier to recognize uh, what to do. Um, if the whole thing was one solid color, you could do that. Uh, but I found that very challenging, and I would assume that you will too. So I think two different colors is a much more efficient and user-friendly and beginner-friendly way of, of learning uh, a herringbone knot based upon a 7x6 Turk set knot. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'll be explaining along the way what I just said uh, as we come to those different checkpoints along the way. So I have here laced up my three and a half foot white strand of 550 parachute cord. And this is something that Torrance Fisher also uh, gave me a little tip on and I really like, like how he does this. Um, it doesn't matter where we enter this, this knot with the interweave strand, it doesn't matter, but Torrance suggests that we stay away from this area. So in other words, let's go all the way opposite here. Just so in the end when we're neatening things up, and uh, we're melting the parachute cord and pushing it in so it doesn't fray. We just don't have a bunch of melted areas all in one spot. So I like that idea. So that being said, let's say this strand right here, this pink one that we went in, we're gonna see this loop here. We're gonna go to the left and count four of them. So that's one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna go in right here. And the strand that we're gonna be following and mimicking is this one right here. So whatever it does, we're going to do all the way until we get to that little X at the top. So first things first, it went under this strand here, this the strand we're following, we're gonna do exactly what it does on the left side. <clears throat> and something that you guys can do that I oftentimes like to do is I like to take the end of the strand and tie a little knot just so I don't get a little too ambitious and pull it through, it just is a little, you know, a little stopper, stopper for you so you don't get too, uh, so you don't pull it through. That's all I'm trying to say. So, all right, see that? So it goes under there, we went under, we're following this pink strand right here all the way to the top. It goes over, we're gonna go over. It goes under this one, we're gonna go under. 
and do what it does on the left side. It goes over this one here. We're gonna go over it and it goes under there. So we're gonna go under there. Alrighty, up to the top. And there's one more action that it takes before we come to our X right here. See that little X? The last thing it does is it goes over this strand right here, this pink one. See that? It goes over. So we're going to do that. Over. Once we get to the X, we're going to take our needle and we're going to push it in this little, little V here. And we're going to go under both strands. And we're going to come out on the other side like that. See that? And I'm just going to snug that up. And don't pull tightly on this. We this I can't stress enough. Don't pull, pull, pull. You want to have room, breathing room for that knot. So when things start to fill in, it naturally um, tightens. So we just went underneath this X. We merged here. So now the nearest strand to me is this one. And whatever it does, we're going to mimic it. But because we're coming down, we're going to mimic it on the right side. Up on the left, down to the right. That's a little phrase that will help you remember. Goes over, we're going to go over. Goes under, we're going to go under. There we are. And as you can see, it goes over, we're going to go over. And it goes under, we're going to go under again. So down we go. We're just going to take the slack out of this thing. Oh, the little annoying twists that'll happen there. If you're getting those little twists, something that you can do is just, you know, stretch out your parachute cord, give a little shake. So now we're coming up on an instance that I described a few minutes earlier. And that is there are two strands that are right next to each other that are different colors. Remember, at ne never at any point do we want to go under both of them or over both of them. We always want to either split them like this over that pink or by doing it under the pink. And the way that we determine whether or not we're going over that pink or under that pink is what we just did here one step back. See that? We went under that pink. So that means we have to go over. We never do two unders or two overs in a row. It's always, you know, up, under, over, under, over. That's the way these knots work. So we go under this pink here as we just did. So that means we have to go over this pink here. So we're going to go over it. And while we go over it, we're also going to split that pair of strands. You see that? I am splitting that pair. In addition to that, remember, we have another X that's formed here in the bottom. You see that? So I'm going under there. I'm splitting that pair. And if I move that little strand over, you can see the X. Just as there are X's on the top, there are also six X's on the bottom. So over that pink, under that entire X, like that. I'm going to pull this snug, not too tight, just finger tight, really. That's all it is to it. And now we've emerged out from underneath that X. And it's just like we started from the beginning with our interweave. See, here we go, up on the left. This is the strand that's closest to me right now. We're gonna mimic what it does on the left. And we're already set up for that. See that? It goes over this pink. We're gonna go over that pink as well. And it goes under. I'm just following that lead strand and doing what it does right alongside it on the left side. So under here, now I'm going to go over this one because that's what it does. It goes over and then it goes under here. So I'm going to do what it does. Just like that. And you will notice the further you progress through the knot, the more and more you're going to see instances of two strands of different colors right next to each other until the end of the knot, basically you're doing that constantly. You're, you're splitting two pairs over and over and over again. So you'll see things will start to fill in. So we went under this one because our lead strand did. Now we have another pair and it looks a little bit different, but if you look at it, you can see those are two strands right next to each other. So, well, what am I gonna do? Do I go over that pink or under it? Well, let's see what we just did. We went under this pink, so that can only mean that we have to go over it. So I'm gonna go over the pink 
and I'm gonna split that. See that, I'm splitting that white. And once again, we have another X. So I have to go through that whole X like that. And just pulling those little twists out. And here we are again. Guys, if you've made it this far, this is the whole motion of this knot. And once you start to recognize splitting those two pairs next to each other and going under the X's, you've got it made. The rest is just practice and learning to recognize where you need to carry out those actions. So as you can see, we've gone underneath the X and now I am going to go on the right of what this does. See that? Look, it goes over. We're going to do that too. And it goes under. There we are. And then it goes over this pink here. We're going to do that too. And here we are, we've come up to another pair of two strands. Because we went over, we have to go under that pink. We're splitting those two strands of different colors. Immediately after we do that, we all of a sudden have another pair right in front of it. And that's what I'm kind of referring to when I say all these pairs are gonna start multiplying. You're gonna see more and more until all you're doing is splitting pairs for the most part. So you see that? We, we split those two strands right there. And turning around, I went under this pink, so that means I have to go over this one while I split those two strands. And then again, pulling this back a little bit, we reveal there's another X. So over the pink and going under that whole X like that. So now I'm gonna pull this out, pull it through, and we're set up as, as if it's like the very beginning again. I just came out from under the X. Here's my strand. I'm following it. Whatever it does, I'm doing on the left side again. Now you will notice uh, as we go through here on this particular pass, we can see the strand that we dropped into the, into the heel knot foundation here. Try to ignore that is as if it doesn't even exist, so don't worry about it. This is our next working strand for the next pass. This one, don't even worry about it. So we go under this one, coming up here. Now we go over this one, and then we have two strands right next to each other. So we're gonna go under this pink here. Because we went over that pink, we're following that strand on the left side. Good. And immediately after this pair has been split in half, the yellow and the pink, we can see another one right next to it. So because we went under this pink, we have to go over this one. So. It's like that. And as soon as we come out from underneath this X here, we have the strand nearest to us. Right there, it goes over. We're gonna go over under here, following it on the right side all the way down. We have two pairs right next to each other. We went under this pink here. That means we go over this pink, splitting those two, and under that pink in one foul swoop. You see that? and pull it through. Immediately after that, we have a third pair. Push that aside a little bit and we can see where we need to go. Over that pink, through to that X. And careful not to get confused with this strand here, which is the one that we fused into the, the uh, the, uh, which is what we fused into the knot foundation. So we wanna use this strand. So we wanna go beyond here. This is a part that can be a little bit tricky here. Wanna push through here. So we went under this one here. And now we're gonna go over this pink and all the way through to the other side here. This part can be a little bit tricky because we can sometimes get confused with this lead strand here and then this strand here that goes in and dead ends there. 
So we want to make sure that this strand is this part of our X all the way through. And we can snug that down just a little bit. And here we are once again, following, coming out from underneath that X and following this strand, everything it does we do to the left again. There we go, right up the side there. We went under this pink here. Now we're gonna go over this pink, splitting those. And then we have another group right after it consecutively. We're gonna do this again in one foul swoop. See that? Over that pink, under that pink, while we split those. And sometimes you can just kind of tune out that white strand, that second color. Just think back where you were when you were doing that first pass. Don't even worry about the white. The white is only there to split, if you know what I mean. Just really pay attention to that pink. That'll always steer you straight. Underneath here, we went under that pink there. And now, over this white here, because we're splitting it, we went under this pink, so now we're gonna go over that pink right there. And then another X. And we're going to go underneath that whole X like we've been doing this whole time. And then we're gonna cinch this down little bit, pull those little loops out. We just came out here. We emerged from underneath another X, following this strand down over the pink, under the pink, while we split those. See that under, and then over this pink while splitting, and under that pink while splitting. Right there. And we're just gonna pull that. And right after it, you can see we have two more strands. And one of those strands makes up the beginning. That means we're starting to near the end. I'm gonna push this over with the tip of my needle to reveal where we need to go in right here. And right after it, there's another X that I'm going to go under. So I went over that pink there, coming up through that X. And I'm just gonna Pull this here, and that looks good. I just came out from underneath an X there. I'm gonna go over this one, under this pink, over this one, splitting as I do this, and under, like that. And I'm gonna pull that. Immediately after, we have another pair. See how it's all, it's almost solely made up of pairs now. We went underneath this pink here, so I'm going to go over this pink right here. And there's another X that we can go underneath. And now I've emerged from yet another X there. And then the strand just to my left is the one we're following. And now we're gonna go over that there. Immediately after, we're going to go under the pink there. Two groups consecutively again. And we came out from underneath that pink, so we're going to go over this pink, over this one here, splitting those while going underneath that other pink there. And pulling that through. We went under this pink, and now we're gonna go over this white here, and then over this pink here, splitting that, the same thing again. Over that pink to split those two, and then right there is another X that we go underneath the entire assembly of that X again, like we have been this whole time. And we're getting very close to finishing this thing. Came out from underneath this X and back up again. The strand just to my right. See how it goes? The pink goes over. So we're gonna go over too while splitting. The 
There's two consecutive ones right there, over the pink, under the pink. And then again, we went under this pink here. So we'll go over this one and under that one like that. And then this is the end of the top. This part, I'm gonna do this very slowly for you guys. We just went underneath this pink here, you see that? So that means here is our two strands. Here are both of them. Over this pink, this is the splitting we're doing right here. I'm gonna work that needle to the side here. You can see the tip of it coming up. And we wanna go underneath this pink here like that. And in doing so, we're going over this pink, splitting these two. We're going under that whole X like that. Pull that through. And now look where we're coming out. We came out from underneath the X immediately after we can see we want to go over this pink here, under this pink here. Just getting a little loops out there, nothing big to that. Just annoying little loops that form along the way. We went under that pink there, see that? And now we're gonna go, this is the strand underneath here. See this little pink showing through? That's the one that's fused. That was how we ended it. Don't worry about that one. We went under this one, over this pink, splitting, and under that pink right there, and pulling this through. So we went under this one right there. We're gonna tilt it on its side like that, and now we're gonna push this pink back a little bit, and then we're gonna go splitting these two under both the pink and the white there, as you can see, pushing it through, and this is the end of the knot. Right there. Make sure it goes through smoothly. And there we have it. Now notice all these spaces in here. You see that? I'm gonna show you how to eliminate that right now. Look at how much of the top of the knot is covering the sides there. So I'm gonna take my fingers, and this is something that's really helpful. You can push all of the sides gently like that. And combining that with the roll that we're gonna be doing here right after I get done tying or uh, cutting these ends and melting them, that roll is gonna do a wonder for eliminating all those little gaps and spaces. See that? Sometimes uh, these, these little sections of the interwoven part here one well, of those little white parts will be kind of underneath that pink. And all you need to do is take your needle, stab it, and pull it towards the center. And that can help you make this top more uniform. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and... I'm gonna grab my lighter now. And we're gonna, we're gonna take this knot and finish it off. Give a little pull there. I'm gonna cut it about a millimeter length there. Take my brand new torch that I just got. I really like this thing. I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description for this thing. It's really nice. It's hard to see the flame in this bright white light, that's for sure. Make sure you don't burn the whip. And then you'll see these two strands here, right there. I'm gonna cut both of those at the same time. I'm gonna get a little closer than that. Take that lighter and just press them into the knot. There you have it, guys. We have a herringbone knot based off of a seven by six Turk's head knot. So I'm just gonna roll this thing with my hand just to get the top there. Just kind of molding that knot before we wax the whip, we have the ability to just to roll it and to just almost mold it like clay because of the nature of that neoprene rubber underneath. It's really helpful in tying knots. And there you have it, guys. The last step is gonna to be to give this thing a waxing. This whip will be ready to crack.
Well guys, here is the finished product. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you're inspired to try this knot. And overall, I really hope this video kind of helped lift your spirits and uh, just gave you some overall encouragement. These are some crazy times that we're going through right now. And uh, there's two ingredients that are really in place to cause you to feel extra alone, more so than ever. Anxiety about the future and the unknown combined with isolation is just a recipe for horrible emotions to feel as a human. So if you're watching this right now, it's late, you're by yourself, you're not alone. We're all we're all going through this. So do, don't ever give into that lie that you're experiencing this by yourself. We're all going to get through this thing together. So stay strong, stay hopeful. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. airplane is flying through the air, it's creating something known as wake turbulence, a disturbance in the atmosphere, and it's a result of that aircraft punching through the air or slicing through the air.